Come on into the room, everyone. Hello and welcome to our Sales Fuel and BIA Advisory Services 2021 Digital Events Series for April. Today's topic, OTT, and there are a lot of you interested in this one. Welcome to all of you. My name is Audrey Strong. I'm your host today. Next slide, Adam. Our panel for you today consists of Rick Ducey. He is the Managing Director of BIA Advisory Services. We're so pleased to have Peter Jones along for the ride today, the Head of Local Sales for Premion. C. Lee Smith, President and CEO of Sales Fuel, and we've got Sales Fuel's Client Success Manager, Adam Ambro, running our slides. Thank you, Adam, in advance for your work today. The discussion today will be on OTT forecast estimates, the landscape, viewer subscribers, and ad responders. Then we're going to do a deep dive into sub-verticals of restaurants, hospitals, and tier three new car dealers. Peter's going to give us his expert analysis throughout. And as a side note, I'm just teeing you up for the end of this <laughs> and to get your registrations, get ready for next month's webinar in the series. It's going to be on lawyers and accountants on May 25th. A little bit of housekeeping for you. If you're having technical issues right now, shoot an email over to webinars at bia.com. There is somebody on duty there to help you. As far as questions go, please type them in as you have them. Questions we don't get to today, we will export and answer post webinar as well. So put it in there, uh, even if we don't get to it. Also for attending, there's a handout you will receive and you can grab the local digital resource. It's full of data and insights into the verticals for the series and watch your inbox tomorrow that's when we'll be sending everyone the links to the recording the slide deck and the handout and also we have a short survey at the end of this webinar we'd like your feedback on how we did so please do us a favor and fill it out it really helps us so now without further ado i would like to turn things over to bia's rick Ducey. rick take it away audrey thank you so much and it's a pleasure to be here with you and also peter and lee with you as always um, there's a lot to cover and uh, some really interesting things going on in this space. So let's get started. So in this um, first slide, I'll talk about, well, I'm gonna share some of our forecast data for OTT. Um, in our forecast, we always talk about ad spend that's targeting local audiences, uh, any kind of geo-targeting element. So that's what we're talking about with our OTT forecast. And there's some more words there to describe what we mean by local. What we mean by OTT, that's kind of a transition term, if you will, for the industry. Um, basically, it uh, has come to mean pretty much connected TV at the moment. Um, that will change in a bit as we get more mobile and desktop and tablet um, ad targeting and spending. But for the moment, most of what we call OTT um, basically is connected TV spending. So that's spending that's competitive with uh, linear TV, broadcasting cable, big screen, um, engaging, and different ways to activate those audiences. So that's kind of how we fashioned our definition of OTT. We use the broader term OTT, but essentially um, we weighed our forecast uh, based on a data and methodology to really address the CTV market, which is typically 90% plus of the premium viewing and 90% plus of the um, ad spending. So there's um, more detail there, but that's essentially what we're talking about uh, in terms of the definition. Now, when we look at who's who in the next slide uh, of the local OTT marketplace, um, I mentioned it's an emerging space. It's also a bit of a crowded space. And during the past year with the pandemic, a lot of things changed. Um, mostly uh, needles bent to the right on our analog gauges uh, and things grew. So uh, viewing grew, um, some ad spend uh, grew in some key verticals and there were more actors and roles in this whole space. So here's one depiction that Peter, you and I have been talking about in terms of what's going on this year in the media universe, um, you um, have a lot of responsibility. You oversee a lot of offices and a lot of direct sellers. Uh, so you're living and breathing this every day. Uh, what's it like out there in the front lines of local OTT? Well, Rick, uh, as you can see, it's it's very fragmented by this uh, by this graphic, and uh, it's supposed to be an eye chart. So what I'll do real quick is just kind of navigate around it, just so everyone knows what they're looking at. Uh, first, the the circles that you're looking at are basically based off the size of revenue of the company. So if we start on the top left where you see Amazon, obviously it's over a trillion dollar company, but that's the total business. We're just looking at what their streaming business is. So Fire TV, you have IMDb TV. I'm going directly south of that. You see Apple TV, obviously they have their Apple TV Plus uh, platform, not ad supported. You have Microsoft going to the right, which is more uh, for gaming. You have Alphabet with Google and YouTube TV. I'm going straight up there to Facebook. 
And then now I'm gonna kind of move to the left. Now we're getting into you know, the, the media platforms, the content platforms, you see Comcast, they were in the news last year, obviously with acquiring Zumo and uh, looking at and uh, launching the Peacock platform, go directly left to that, you have Disney, and kind of right off of the side, you have Hulu with roughly about 39 million subscribers. In ballpark from different estimates, you may see like about two thirds of those are actually ad supported viewers on Hulu. Uh, we're all familiar with Netflix directly to the left. I'm going one more circle over to AT&T and above that you see HBO Max, uh, roughly 36 million subscribers. They, they did hint last month that they could be exploring an ad supported model as early as June. So be on the lookout for that going directly below Netflix. This is where a lot of the news that we've heard this year. So with Viacom, if you saw the Super Bowl, you probably saw a few ads for Paramount Plus. So that launched this year, right below Viacom, you see Discovery Scripts, they launched Discovery Plus this year. So as you can see, it's, it's definitely a, uh, a fragmented and crowded space. But one thing I want you know uh, local marketers to look at is when you see some of the numbers as far as how many subscribers or how many you know MAUs or monthly active users they have, there's not a whole lot of scale. And I'll use uh, YouTube TV on the bottom right. You see roughly about 3 million subscribers. If you're a local business or local marketer, that, that 3 million, that's their nationwide number. That's not gonna be enough for you to reach your, your audience in your local market. So that's why you need a partner like a premium or something that can help you navigate this space. And, and especially when you look in between all these little circles, that's where you have a lot more, you know, the OTT pure plays. You have a lot of different networks. Um, it just gets, you know, I, I kind of jokingly and tongue in cheek sometimes say the Bill and Ted's excellent OTT companies. So there is a lot of noise. And that's why, you know, I think uh, most local marketers need a you know, partner to help them navigate the space. And Peter, to that point, um, two things, actually, I, I wonder if you have some thoughts about. One is there's a lot happening in OTT. Uh, but a lot of that, I mean, the OTT kind of gets divided into subscription video on demand, SVOD, uh, advertising video on demand, and um, what's come to be called FAST, the free uh, supported streaming TV services. So of all the streaming, subscribing, and viewing, it's a big, exciting, vibrant space, but not many of those pressions are actually targetable by advertisers, right? Because a lot of it's SVOD viewing. Well, actually, no. I mean, a lot of a lot of it, you are able to start to target. You know, if we saw anything from last year is that, you know, consumer behavior sped up the adoption of those fast platforms and those AVOD platforms. So now when a few years ago, you know, more marketers or agencies, they wanted the, the brands that they were familiar with. So, you know, your Hulu's or your, you know, Discoveries or your Scripps networks. But now with, you know, the consumer behavior kind of shifting and that the adoption of the free ad support and streaming TV platforms or the AVOD platforms, you know, you're going to see start see Pluto TV, which is owned by Viacom. They have over 30 million monthly users. Um, they're getting a lot of good inventory and they have a lot of premium content. Uh, Tubi was acquired by Fox last year. And you, you'll see that kind of in the middle as well, where, where they have roughly about 25 million monthly active users. So we're starting to see more adoption, which is going to be more inventory. Uh, and it's all premium content. And that, I mean, from a buyer perspective, like you were saying, um, if I'm a buyer, uh, a brand or an agency, and I want to target audiences uh, that are in, a, in the ad supported part of the streaming universe. Uh, there's a lot of different brands I can go to, or I could go to an aggregator, someone who takes that fragmented inventory and packages it up and make it more accessible. Is that is that sort of the premium value proposition or one of them in the marketplace? A absolutely. I mean, we, we aggregate all the premium publishers. We make sure that their brand's safe. We make sure it's a fraud-free environment. And, uh, you know, you, you've probably heard a couple of headlines this year already about some of the scams that have taken place in the, you know, the OTT marketplace. Um, that's just something that, you know, we've been extremely aggressive about becoming tag certified, which is the trustworthy accountability group. It's kind of like the gold standard uh, when it comes to, you know, combating ad fraud. Uh, so, you know, having that partner like a premium or someone to help navigate the space in such a fragmented environment, I think is key to local marketers and agencies. Yep. Well, that's great, Peter. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So that's the uh, sandbox we're all playing in. What do the numbers look like? So BIA has been forecasting OTT in local, uh, targeting local audiences um, for a couple of years now. And here's our look ahead to 2025, just to give the sense of, of scale and the growth curve. So the growth curve, um, we're calling it uh, 19, a little over 19% compound annual growth rate uh, through this time series here. Um, this year, we expect $1 billion plus in uh, ad spend in local OTT, uh, OTT and that's going to basically double by 2025. So on the scale of things, this is a, a pretty vibrant and rapidly growing 
section of the market. And um, on the next slide, I'll show you how this fits into context. So, you know, a billion plus uh, marketplace, uh, 1.2 billion doubling to 2.4, those are good numbers. But how people are using video is, is evolving also. So in the broader context of all the local video impressions that um, advertisers have to target, you can see the bottom uh, bar here, uh, which is local TV stations, is still kind of foundational for, for video spending. And then the next uh, tranche is uh, local cable. Uh, then we get into um, local online video, which video, which uh, BIA refers to as not streaming, but that's um, like outstream video, for example. Out of home video is uh, video digital signage. Um, mobile video, um, that's where a lot of YouTube uh, video happens, for example. And then the yellow bar on top, that's local over the top video. So here you see the 1.2 billion in 2021, doubling to 2.4 in 2025. So it's an exciting space. Anytime a marketplace doubles, that's big news. Uh, and as you can see, the other parts of the video marketplace um, um, relatively stable. I mean, we see we've seen some growth, but there's no doubling in the rest of it. But this huge um, um, nominal numbers to start with uh, before we get to the growth. And then um, I think what we'll do now is take a break, Peter, and, and find out what the audience thinks about things. Yeah, I think this will be a great illustration because I kind of hinted earlier about the uh, adoption of, you know, some of the streaming services the last year due to the pandemic. You know, I, I would like, you know, the audience to think about how many different streaming platforms or streaming services did you experiment with last year, you know, did you try them out or how many do you even subscribe to now? You know, a lot of us, it's more than one or two. So think about how many of those did you try out and how many do you have? And go ahead and fill in this poll right here. So it'll give us a pretty good illustration of what everyone was doing last year and kind of, you know, how quickly we were adopting different platforms last year. I'm kind of guilty. I probably have five to six different subscription services in my household. Yeah, Peter, and, I, go ahead, yeah, yeah, sorry. And, and in the next segment, I'm going to be talking, I'm showing some interesting charts on, on this particular topic. But one question I wanted to ask you about was, uh, you know, because of the up, big uptick that we had during during the pandemic, as we wind our way through it, hopefully, and, and people started heading back to the office and heading back to schools and everything like that, now all of a sudden, you know, there, there's fewer hours in the day. You know, it's like because we have to get ready for work, we have to go to work, come back from work, we have to you know, drive the kids here and there, and like that. It's like, you know, can, can we expect the same kind of growth in OTT adoption that we experienced in 2020 to continue on for the next next year or two, or, or will we, or will things slow down a little bit? I, I think you're you're going to continue to see that the shift. You're going to see people cutting cords. I think last year, uh, one of the recent studies that I, can, I can't remember if it was eMarket or Deloitte said about seven million households. There's still there's still a lot of households that are still you know uh, have pay TV subscriptions. So I think you're going to continue to see growth. Uh, I think last year was just you know what accelerated more of the consumer behavior. And I think once they kind of get uh, a taste for it, you're going to see the cord shavers kind of move down to the cord cutters. And then, you know, you're going to see more of the cord stackers that are also going to kind of cut back. But I think you're just going to see more adoption of the subscription fatigue, I think is what you're referring to. I mm -hmm. think you might see that settle in a little bit, Lee. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about cord nevers as well. Yeah, I think that, the, you know, this whole marketplace is getting restructured um, by different demographic cohorts, uh, the younger groups, age groups. Um, are kind of cord nevers, uh, or or maybe they um, uh, with the streaming packages available now, um, they're getting with any of the virtual MVPDs. Uh, some of those, uh, you know, accomplish a lot of what they're trying to get across linear TV sources as well as the um, digital TV sources. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a new marketplace, for, and you know, it's always interesting. It seems like uh, technology leads, and then audiences. Uh, adopt and then advertisers uh, eventually follow. So the technology has been in place for a while for streaming. Audiences kind of figured it out and migrated there. And then advertisers now uh, in greater mass are starting to say, where did our peeps go? And, you know, they're finding them um, at first through audience extension strategies and streaming services as supported streaming services. But now some of these providers, like we, we did a, a webinar uh, several weeks ago, we had somebody from Samsung saying that for, um, Samsung devices, 25% of uh, streaming is done only on TV sets. So, I mean, the TV set is becoming a streaming device. Mm -hmm. so it's pretty significant how things are moving so quickly.
Let's see. I'm trying to think of my answer for this. I think I'm guilty. I'm probably in the six to eight range. <laughs> really curious to see how this one shakes out. Yeah, let's see the results. Wow, okay. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Not to be unexpected. There you go. Oh, neat. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of sampling. And I guess what we're seeing is people have been some there's been a lot of trial offers, a lot of launches. And so people do a trial on trial uh, offer for six months or whatever. And then uh, you know, some stay, some don't. Um so there's some turnover among the services. But three to five, uh, maybe up to as many as eight seems pretty solid. I mean, I think the big takeaway, so you have take out the one to two and the zero. So you're at 78% is used three or more services last year. That's a that's mm -hmm. a very high number. Yep. It is, especially when you think what those services mean. I mean, those services oftentimes are platform services that are windows into many content services. Uh, so it's it's quite a lot of diversity that people are connecting themselves to in the video universe. Well, so let's talk about the OTT viewers and the subscribers and also then uh, how they respond to the ads. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the next segment. Adam, go ahead and give me the next slide. So let's talk about how U.S. adults get most of their television programming. I'm going to start with the, the donut chart over here on the right. And uh, we see that the cable subscription still you know, over a third, satellite 17%. You have the telephone company providers like ATT, you know, Uverse, Verizon, Fios. Uh, but look at that over the top streaming services number now. That, that number is up to 30, 31.7%. When we asked the question, how do you get most of your television programming? And we only allowed the respondents to select only one. And this is due from our audience scan digital marketing segmentation. It's a study that we do every year. We've done it for 11 years now on uh, to, to measure consumer behavior, and particularly as it relates to uh, pre-purchase research and media usage, advertising and the like. We had over 15,000 uh, people in this in the sample for that. And uh, we have the, the 2021 uh, going out in the field next week. But uh, we asked the same question in 2018 and 2019 over on the left side of your chart. In 2018, 19% said that's how they got most of their programming, up to 26, and then a, a bump up in 2020, up to 31.7. So for this segment of the uh, presentation of the webinar, I'm going to define the people that get most of their television programming as heavy, heavy OTT users, because that's where they're getting most of their stuff, not, not the other outlets. Let's go to the next slide. And we're going to break this. We, we've found that there are really three segments, three primary segments. There's a bunch of other ones, mind you, but just look at the primaries. You can. There are three major groups you got to look at. One is the young adults, and that, that that's the cord nevers that, that that we just previously mentioned. But adults 18 to 24 are 58 percent more likely than the average U.S. adult to be heavy OTT users. Not terribly surprising. Cord cutters, we've heard a lot about cord cutters. And heavy OTT viewers are 146% more likely to have subscribed to cable or satellite, but no longer do. So cord cutting is an aspect of this. And then the other aspect, though, are young families. 55% uh, more likely to subscribe to Disney+. Plus. And there's lots of other options out there. You've, you've got the Nickelodeon programming uh, on Paramount+, Plus, for example, and all, and all kinds of other things like that. So young families are, are, are then you know, turning to OTT for different reasons. Uh, and also, it's it's a great way to keep the kids occupied in the back seat with 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 their iPad, you know, you know, watching SpongeBob or something. So, uh, that's those are the three primary uh, audiences there that, uh, that that make up the heavy OTT users. Let's go to the next slide. So, some interesting stats about that that you can use out on the sales trail. 57% of heavy OTT users watch on a smart TV or a connected TV device. 52% own an iPad or an Android tablet, so they have the capability of watching OTT there uh, and, and using the apps. 38% also own a video game console, and so now you can watch on, on your PlayStation and, and so forth. And the top streaming subscriptions that uh, heavy OTT users are, are using, Netflix far away, number one, about 80% of that group. Amazon Prime Video is another one, then Hulu, Disney+, Plus, YouTube TV. Next slide. Let's talk about the top programming genres that the heavy OTT users are are consuming. It's cartoons, and we also see that you know there, there's a there's a lot of uh, you know interest in in sci-fi and comic books and everything like that, particularly in the younger adults that, that make up that first segment. Cartoons is a part of that. There's sci-fi. 
a lot of movies, a lot of comedies, and also food cooking shows as well. The next side of this chart actually surprises me a little bit because one of the things I watch on OTT all the time is home improvement shows. You know, where they're fixing up a home and they're flipping it or, you know, they're buying a new dream home or something like that. Uh, they're 12% less likely than the average U.S. adult to watch those shows. Daytime talk, even less. Sports, not quite so much. You know, we were just talking uh, before the webinar about uh, the new package that, that Turner Sports just signed with the NHL then to put to, to stream uh, hockey games on, on on HBO, HBO Max specifically. Uh, and of course, you have you have Peacock doing the Premier League and doing IndyCar and NASCAR there as well. Uh, ESPN Plus, of course, I'd be remiss not to mention that. But among this group, though, they're not heavy sports watchers. Actually, the only real sport that they over-index for compared to the average U.S. adult is MMA. So I uh, found that interesting. Political talk, not a lot of that. And also, they're less likely to watch either on OTT or on linear TV any local news, which is, which is a little bit of a concern. So next slide. Let's talk about advertising influence. That's, why, that's what we're here for. So uh, if we look at the... Uh, the U.S. adults in the past 30 days that have been influenced by, by OTT ads, 22% uh, say they've taken action after seeing an ad on uh, an OTT app or, or, or stream. And 59.5% uh, say they've taken some sort of action in the last 12 months. What do we mean by taking action? We're defining that, and we define that for the survey takers as banner ads, doing an internet search, going to the advertiser's website, buying the product advertised through e-commerce, or calling or visiting the advertiser. Uh, but when we compare that to the heavy OTT viewers in the past 30 days, 26.4%, 72.2% over the last 12 months. So clearly these, these are people are also in, being influenced uh, by the advertising, whether it be through an AVOD or, 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 or through other means. Next slide. Let's talk about uh, one of the great ways that as media sellers that, that we can uh, really package the OTT advertising is to pair it with social media advertising. 34% of heavy OTT viewers have taken action after seeing an ad on social media in the past 30 days. That's even more than the OTT number. And the social media that they use most is not surprising. It's Facebook, as, as with everybody, YouTube, but Instagram is up there quite a ways, and Pinterest is also up there quite a bit. They are more likely that, but here's, so a lot of those numbers will end up being the same. What's notable in its absence is Twitter, for example. But I like to look at the indexing. So the, 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 I think there's where you get the real insight here. So the heavy OTT users are more likely than the average US adult to use these, Reddit. They're 42% more likely to use Reddit, 40% more likely to use Snapchat, 37% more likely to use TikTok, and then 17% more likely to use Twitch. Now, some of you might be saying, well, wait a minute, isn't Twitch an OTT service? It's like, is it an OTT service or is it a social media? And the answer is yes. It is one of those rare things where it's kind of a hybrid, and but we lumped it in with social because it's a very social environment with lots of communication going on all the time. Uh, so we lumped it in with, with, with social media, but it is also an OTT uh, so, uh, option as well. So next slide. I talk about the top U.S. markets based on average household spend, and all of these markets had to reach a threshold of having more than $20 million spent total in market on streaming, rental, or downloading video. Uh, and the number one market, Salt Lake City, but you're going to see uh, some other markets, and that's the home to the Qualtech, Qualtrics, for example. And it's like it's, it's becoming uh, uh, a good market, then a high-tech market, but as is markets like Austin and Boston and Seattle, obviously, San Francisco, the Bay Area, of course. Uh, so you're seeing that markets then with uh, you know that are heavy heavy in the technology, they're showing up in the top 10 by, by, by and large. They have the most household spend. Uh, for the markets. If I would have done total spend, you would have seen the normal New York, Los Angeles, and everything like that. So this is the, based on average household spend. Uh, next slide. Well, that okay. is the last slide. So Audrey, let's yep. turn it back to you. We have a lot of questions. So like I said, um, we will export and answer these offline, uh, but I'll we'll ask one of them uh, real quickly. Um, Don Moore wants to know, how does OTT conversion compare to regular OTA conversion rates. Thank you, Don, for your question. Well, I can, uh, I'll, I'll touch on this real quick. So obviously there's a lot of different factors that can impact whether it's over the air or OTT. Um, I mean, we have seen comparable conversion rates uh, with comparable schedules. 
Now, that being said, obviously, if you have a, a smaller OTT budget in a big linear budget, then you might see bigger responses from linear and then vice versa. If you have a bigger OTT budget, you might see a bigger response from OTT. But I think we touched on an important, um, important piece when he was talking about taking action. I mean, if, uh, I think the biggest thing that agencies and advertisers and marketers can do this year is make sure that they have measurable outcomes from their campaigns. You know, you said, what are the uh, better, better conversions? In a prior life in the digital space, I can tell you we are seeing just as good a conversions in the OTT space that we were seeing running Google campaigns or running social media campaigns. So with, with a highly targeted campaign, you're gonna see some pretty good outcomes. So we're looking at this as more of a performance-based uh, type of marketing campaign. A great and also, question. Too. Yeah, and if they're, if they're consuming the, the media then you know with a controller of some sort in their hand, whether it be a video game controller, or remote control, or of course then the smartphone or tablet, uh, it makes it so much easier for them just to actually then visit a website or buy a product online as they say it or, or comment on something that's great okay we're going to start going into these sub verticals now i'm going to toss it back over to rick great thank you audrey so we'll look at a few different verticals let's start with restaurants um so in 2021 we're saying that that restaurants um the segment quick serve and full serve uh, we have uh, several different sub verticals um, in the restaurant vertical but looking at um quick serve and full serve seven billion dollars in spending in 2021 in local advertising across all the markets you track in the u.s <clears throat> and that's across 16 media platforms looking just at tv ott um about a percent uh, a little bit less than average goes into ott from this category for 2021 and of course this category is very hard hit in 2020 and, and even into the first quarter of 2021 because of the pandemic. But as um, local jurisdictions uh, and states start to open things up, uh, we may see the second half of 2021 spending accelerate. So that's uh, about $67 million uh, US wide in 2021. Um, we're going to see this category grow overall restaurants to about $8.8 .8 billion um, in a couple of years, 2023. And we'll see a jump up um, by over a third increase in spending to 1.3% going to OT. We're, um, we're breaking that $100 uh, million mark, almost $110 million uh, by 2023. And then in the next slide, uh, just to show in context, some of the things we're talking about, like um, activation, response, engagement, uh, like, like Peter and Lee, you were just saying, you know, digital um, really has that kind of targetability. The more you target, the more you'd expect to have um, uh, engagement uh, and kind of response to the KPIs, whether they're digital or offline KPIs. So we're seeing restaurants um, over the next couple of years will cross that big line uh, to go more into digital. The majority of their spending, 52% will move into digital, um, chasing that targetability and Peter like here saying performance-based advertising, coupons, or some sort of direct call to action that they want to see engage with the audience. Uh, next slide, please. So what I'll be doing then for these sub verticals is giving you some sub selling points and if you're actually pursuing your local prospects then to sell them OTT advertising. And so here are a few points for that, that you can take with you. 22% of heavy OTT viewers eat at or order takeout from a non fast food restaurant at least twice a week. 33% you know, of them eat fast food at least twice a week. They're 48% more likely to use their smartphone to order delivery from DoorDash. And their number one food preference, believe it or not, they're 20% more likely to order chicken wings from a restaurant. And yes, it's true that one of their top five restaurants is Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Next slide. So just, uh, we've got a few insights we'll call out here. And Peter, I'm gonna, um... Um, do a shout out to you also. So from BIA's perspective, when we do these forecasts, we present the numbers, um, talk about some of the drivers of it, and then what does it mean? You know, what, what's something actionable for, for media sellers uh, to work on with their clients to create some value for them? So COVID drove OTT viewing and subscriptions. It created an opportunity for restaurants to reach customers at scale, um, geotargeting in geographic areas around their shops. And while indoor seating was either um, prohibited or severely restricted, there was a business model shift uh, as restaurants went to curbside pickup and, and delivery. Uh, so they had to get that word out. You know, we, we do, were doing business differently. So that really um, drove a lot of the spending in OTT because they could target people in a geographic area um, much more tightly than they could with, say, some 
linear TV vibes, uh, vibes. If you go back to that stack bar chart I had uh, of uh, like linear TV, it's like that reaching a broad market, uh, maybe less efficient for these struggling restaurants that are just trying to get people in their immediate trading area to come in and do some business with them. So Peter, if we look at restaurants now that are using um, over the top video successfully, um, are they gonna be spending more um, in this category for 2021, do you think? That's exactly what we're seeing right now. And to your three bullet points, uh, they adapted very quickly last year. And now as you know, some of the QSRs and FSRs are starting to open back up, uh, we're gonna con we continue to see them invest more, especially in those zips that surround their locations. And then now that they're able to measure, well, how many people are they driving into the physical uh, stores? So you know, we definitely wanna look at measuring football attribution. I think that's key for all QSR and FSR brands. Make sure that the partners are able to do that. Great. Okay, um, let's jump over to hospitals. Uh, I guess speaking of uh, COVID, yes, um, um, unhappily many, many of us or friends, family ended up in hospitals. So what's happening with hospitals? Uh, a lot of elective surgery got uh, canceled or postponed. Uh, they had some kind of impacts where people didn't wanna go to hospitals because they were afraid of um, getting exposed to various things there. So to spend in, in 2021, $4 billion, um, was a bit challenged in this category, um, but again, they're looking for a targeted audience. So um, sort of above average uh, of the spend in the media mix went to OTT, which ends up being about $51 million uh, we're seeing for this year. Uh, but as um, time moves on and hospitals get more experience with this media platform, we're expecting to see some growth. So about a 25% jump in spending. Um, uh, in terms of absolute numbers, but also relatively um, increasing the percentage of their spend as well to 1.7% to $84 million. So this is a, a category of hospitals where we're seeing a big jump in, in spending. And in the next slide, we'll just uh, do a little call out here on the digital side. Um, they do like traditional media um, brands and agencies serving those brands in the hospital space. Uh, for 2021, only about a third of their spend is in digital. That's about $1.3 billion in, in 2021. And that breaks out into um, uh, streaming services, TV online, typically websites and mobile apps. And same thing for radio online, websites and mobile apps owned and operated assets. Uh, mobile, which often translates to uh, Facebook, and then online, about 45.2%. And a lot of that is um, search driven as people are trying to figure out whatever condition or service they're trying to get from a hospital, what is that, and then who provides it. And then sitting at the top, um, TVOTT of, of that spend um, is um, getting about 3.8%. So then in the next slide, I'll flip it back to you, Lee, to give us some okay. more prospects. Selling points then for selling local prospects for OTT advertising in this category. Uh, it's interesting. If you think back to those, those three primary categories I mentioned you know, in my first segment, talk about you know, there was a young adults you know, on the left, there was the young families on, on the right. So this first stat speaks to the young adults then becoming young families, 5.5%. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's a heavy OTT viewers say that they want to get pregnant or start a family in the next 12 months. That's 45% higher than all U.S. adults. So again, that, that's speaking to, to, to the young part of it there as well. Now, 11.3%, one in nine of heavy OTT viewers you know, have expressed dissatisfaction with their current primary care doctor and say that they want to switch to a new doctor within the next year. And that is 15% higher than all U.S. adults. So doctors then become uh, you know, a, a target. And again, going back then to uh, starting a family, then you, you, you have doctors there as well, but you also have uh, hospitals and health systems, for example, uh, that, that have as a strength their maternity uh, departments. And then uh, pre-pandemic, from April 20, 2019 to March 2020, that nearly 30% of all heavy OTT viewers have visited an urgent care center uh, during that time frame pre-pandemic. And, and I gave you that stat instead of the current stat because obviously that, that number is skewed because of the pandemic. But it just goes to show you that health systems that also operate urgent care centers, there's another thing for them to be advertising on OTT. Rick, back to you. Great, thank you. So a couple couple takeaways here. Targeting is key uh, for this category of hospitals in this platform, OTT. Um, OTT provides uh, ideal privacy compliance, HIPAA compliant audience targeting, 
with third-party privacy compliance and ability to use lookalike audiences and anonymous first-party IDs. So in this, there's a lot of things happening in this privacy uh, being compliant and using third-party data. Uh, this week, Apple iOS 14.5 has rolled out, which um, flips the switch on IDFA, the identifier for advertisers uh, in App Land. That's going to impact mobile targeting advertising because by default, um, that data sharing from the users is now turned off. You have to opt in. That changes things a lot. Uh, so that that may impact uh, mobile spending. Some of the people that are spending in mobile, and we saw that that was a pretty heavy category for media in this um, business vertical. <clears throat> Some of that mobile spend, um, you know, we're looking for that. It may actually shift into OTT because uh, you have the targeting, you have the data, you have the ability to have governance and privacy controls to be compliant with HIPAA as well as um, state and um, federal uh, kind of privacy thing. So a lot happening in this kind of identity graph space and OTT is sitting in a nice position there. Peter, what do you think about hospitals? What do you see happening for 2021? It's another great vertical that adapted well to the pandemic. And I think your first bullet point with, you know, having HIPAA compliant audience targets that they're able to utilize, uh, they can make custom campaigns. If you think of, you have a bottom bullet, this is a 25 mile radius. Well, they may have a bigger radius if they're just work, doing a telehealth campaign. And then if they have like a kind of a, a specialty that they're trying to focus on, that may be a closer uh, radius around the hospital for people that may have a certain condition that they can target. You know, there are some ways to, to measure the campaigns that we've seen hospitals utilizing. You know, they can do website attribution. Hospitals do uh, can have a tendency to also leverage footfall attribution um, where specialty clinics may not have that advantage. Uh, we continue to see the growth in this segment. And I think you're you're going to see that trend kind of increase as far as uh, they become more familiar with it and how they're able to utilize uh, these advantages right here. It is interesting, like you're saying, in a category like this, that has some very specialty oriented services that really need to be targeted. I mean, may, for certain services, there may be, you know, not very many people, even in the entire market, um, that are eligible for those services. So being able to geo-target them or target them by other kind of interest or attribute areas and reach them efficiently, um, pretty powerful. All right, let's move on to the next slide. So the um, in the auto market, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about new cars and um, I, I guess we'll do that. Um, uh, knowing that it's a tough part of the auto market right now, uh, we've been reading that um, computer chipsets are hard to come by. And uh, I think cars have like 100 computers in them or something or microprocessors. So that's really affecting the supply side. The demands there, um, as people feel more confident about the economy and their own household economy, um, they're in market for, for new cars. Uh, the issue is the supply chain is not putting uh, wheels on the lots. And so it doesn't make a lot of sense to do heavy investment to drive demand, bring people to lots only to be disappointed. So um, that, that's kind of one of the things that's happened on the new car side. Uh, used cars, a little bit happier story there. But for 2021, uh, 3.1 billion um, in new dealer tier one spending, 1.7% uh, uh, goes to OTT. So, so far this is the heaviest weighted category in OTT, but it shows, uh, in terms of a percentage of their spend, $52 million. And we see that going up in 2023 to almost $3.7 billion. And again, uh, more vote of confidence, more of that media mix is shifting into TVOTT, 2.1%. Um, which brings it to you know um, almost a 50% increase to 76.2 million dollars. And next slide, just to call us out in terms of the way digital works, auto starts off as a um, heavy digital um, category. They're already over 50% digital, and we're going to see that continue. So 3.1 billion overall 2021 to 3.7 billion in 2023, and a 4% increase in the in the media mix uh, being allocated to to digital. And again, we have a note down there, uh, chip shortages uh, could uh, impact spending trends and so on, but we'll see how fast we can get that squared away. Okay, next slide, please. So here's some selling points for you as you're presenting OTT then to your auto dealers. Most important factor when heavy OTT viewers uh, use when choosing a dealership to contact or visit by far is dealer reputation. Great opportunity for you to bundle then some of your reputation management services in with your social media advertising along with the OTT advertising and your linear TV advertising. So uh, that is the number one thing by far. I mean, it, 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 it is well above uh, willingness to deal or negotiate. 
So then you've got, uh, you know, what are they looking for when they're looking into a new car? I didn't include this bullet point on the slide, but I'll just share it with you anyway. That uh, that is 42% of heavy OTT viewers are looking for fuel economy is the number one thing they're looking for in a, in a new car. Uh, you know, and again, that far surpasses anything else. Now, when they're doing that, 26% of these viewers also read the reviews from others who have already purchased the vehicle that they're considering. So again, this goes back into the reputation management for, for the dealer, but they're also then checking out the, the car and what people are saying about it online as well. Very social because again, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the, the younger sets that, that are out there. By the way, a lot of them are driving Volkswagens, Mazdas and Jeeps, for example. Now, a lot of them have, you know, about 16% plan to buy a new car in the next 12 months, but 19% of them plan to purchase a used car in the next 12 months. And some of those that are that are hoping to buy a new car, of course, there's some overlap. Some people were, were, were not sure if I'm going to buy a new or a used, so that's why, you know, you can't add those two numbers together. But even some that are in the new car thing, it's like if they go to the lot then and they can't find what it is that they, they want to buy because of chip shortages and everything like that, they will, historically, they will fall back then and buy used. So that don't sleep on on the used car portion of the dealership. Don't sleep on used car dealers as well as new car dealers for, for OTT. It's a great market for them. Rick? Thanks, Lee. Yeah, so um, in terms of insights here, uh, the auto market likes to advertise, they like to target, they like to segment, and they like to activate their segments uh, across different models and different value propositions. So with the increased access to audiences on CTV platforms uh, of various sorts and more impressions, more viewing, um, it becomes a nice targetable base uh, for these advertisers to reach their their um, prospects, uh, consumers in market uh, that are reachable uh, to be activated on CTV platforms. So um, Peter, from your experience um, at Premion and then what you see into the window uh, on the techno side of things. When advertisers, auto advertisers, are targeting local audiences, um, is OTT its own kind of um, destination for some ad spending, or is it we're going to organize our campaign around linear and then do audience extension, reach um, audiences that we're not fully capturing on the linear side, uh, or is it a mixture of both? It is a mixture of both, and I think we all know who some of the big automotive, um, you know, advertisers are in the market. They're the big broadcast advertisers that leverage OTT to be an extension of that, you know, broadcast audience. And then you might have some of your smaller, you know, single point or maybe just one or two uh, tier three rooftops that, you know, they're, you know, traditional like cable, um, you know, TV buyers that buy their zone, and now they're leveraging OTT to get those cord cutters, uh, you know, that's just in their primary, their, their PMA, so they can kind of hit their backyard. Um, the, the, what is consistent across, you know, the, the bigger and the smaller rooftops is they all want to make know if can you target my auto intenders that I want to reach in engaging content that's brand safe, that's fraud free, and can you measure? I think the biggest thing that auto dealers are, are hearing with all the noise in the spaces is uh, CPM. And I know this is going to sound counterintuitive, but we need to have a different conversation away from CPM. We need to talk about what's the outcome from the campaign. How many website visitors are we driving from your campaign? How many people are you driving to your physical dealership lot? If, if someone's talking about CPM, well, they have different goals. You can't, we can't worry about finding the cheapest inventory and worry about driving the best outcome. So I think that's definitely important for auto dealers to you know, make sure that they're educated to make sure they're driving the best outcome out of their campaign. I think, and that's kind of a general trend I think we're seeing um, in video is, a move towards more performance-based uh, on the linear side that gets into all kinds of things like make goods and, and tracking a lot of uh, workflow that people would really rather be focusing their energy, like you're saying, Peter, on, on outcomes. And, you know, one thing in the OTT space that is kind of interesting for a group like yours, Peter, where you have access to both the OTT inventory and the linear inventory is you can help optimize uh, the spend and steward that across the linear platforms as well as the OTT platforms. So you don't have to do like an OTT buy with an OTT platform and then go do linear buy. You can get that uh, combined buy and that can be optimized through a campaign shifting spend as you know the performance KPIs start to suggest you really need to adjust to have more spend in OTT now because that's really driving more um, engagement than uh, we'd initially planned in a campaign. Is that the kind of give and take you're seeing? 
It, it is. I mean, it's the best of both worlds. You have that linear experience from broadcast and from OTT, but you have the digital KPIs that help you optimize the campaign to help drive that better ROI. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, next slide, please. Thanks, Peter. Okay, so we do have some questions, gentlemen. And um, Celine Matisson, who I had the pleasure of meeting in person last week from BIA Advisory Services, Rick said that she thought you possibly misspoke that on the t at spend slide you said tier one and that it's tier three. And could you please clarify? Uh, uh, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. So, so tier three new car sales. I did misspeak. Thank you, Celine. Excellent. Okay, a couple of more questions. Uh, what percentage of the streaming is done on large screen versus small screen, or TV versus phones, that type of thing? What is your opinion on that? The, depends on your target. I mean, we're seeing the majority of our impressions are being delivered on the big screen. Now, granted, we, are, we do have a lot of um, brand safe and quality engaging content. So if you're, if you're watching, uh, and I'll just use an example. If you're watching Discovery uh, Network, you're watching you know, your favorite show on HGTV, you tend to watch that on TV. If you're watching more of a, a short form content or you know, something that may be more mobile centric, then you might see more inventory delivered on a mobile device. But on the premium platform, we're seeing the majority of our inventory over 80% being served on connected TVs. Excellent. Next question would be, um, would you address ATSC 3.0 as a hybrid form of OTT? Absolutely. I think you're going, to be, you're going to see it kind of be more of a hybrid, more interactive and engaging content. I think it's going to be a great complement uh, to OTT. Excellent. Next question. Oh, how much weight would you assign to the growth of OTT to the ability to target unique audience audiences and to track conversions? I, I think uh, I think I made a, a reference before when I was uh, comparing uh, the outcomes to like past digital like Google search campaigns or social media campaigns, that's exactly what we're seeing because of the targetability and because of the attribution model that we have in place, we're showing the same outcomes from an OTT campaign from some of the best search campaigns from the best social media campaigns that we've run in the past. So very highly effective and efficient marketing spend. You get the best of both worlds, both of digital and television. Absolutely. It's actually, and as you know, data science and the tools and analytics come more into play and more common use, um, some of the things we're seeing is that the agencies and brands are looking at some of that digital spend, uh, search and social particularly, and they've been optimizing within those channels, but now that they have the ability to do some cross-platform identity graph tracking and see what's happening, um, they're seeing that they're kind of saturating uh, who they're trying to reach in those platforms. And going into OTT gives them a new value proposition with that big screen um, ad creative engagement. And they're able to bring those same targeting and attribution and optimization tools to a large extent to this new video platform. <clears throat> so that's one of the things we're, we're looking to see some, some search, uh, you know, more weight to OTT. Um, as search does its job, as social does its job, but at some point you're actually, that incremental spend is gonna drive more performance, like you're saying, Peter, in OTT, than gonna be able to achieve with uh, search and social. Excellent channel, they drive a lot of uh, performance. At some point, your incremental spend is gonna do a better job for you in a different ad platform like OTT. This next yeah, question right. is, oh. oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna have one last thing. Cause, you know, coming from the digital space, you know, we always got, kind of uh, not blamed, but we got that credit for the last click attribution model where they may have seen the you know the linear spot, but then they came through a paid search. Well, now we are able to kind of see that multi-touch approach for the attribution where we know they saw that ad on TV and then they came to the website. So it does, it, it is more of a, a little bit of a shift on how we're measuring. Yeah, exactly. That's going to be very consequential downstream, I think. Rick, question for you, is OTT spending growth coming from linear TV, digital, or somewhere else? Somewhere else sounds like an awful big category. Great question. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we kind of talked about this just now, actually. And, you know, the answer to, to this question is sort of a typical one, uh, yes, yes, and yes. So more money is coming into OTT, you know, as advertisers are adding actually incremental dollars to ad spending, so that's going to go to OTT. It's an exciting ad platform. And as we were just saying, um, and, and Peter, you were giving some examples also, fr from the digital side, with these cross-platform attribution tools, <clears throat> we're able to see that that last-click model, I mean, a lot of Google search, um, when, when that gets activated, it's, you know, you're doing attribution and you're optimizing on the last-click. 
that's kind of the default um, attribution algorithm. And it's just not accurate. And, and people kind of intuitively knew that, but just we're on inertia, auto drive. Now the tools are in your face. You can look at the dashboard and say, well, it's just, you know, it wasn't actually that search click. If we look at, even Google has their own tools to do this. You can look at linear TV and OTT ad spend um, and look at, uh, KPIs like website traffic or uh, mobile app downloads, and you set your attribution window, and you can see that that weight into um, OTT or linear TV actually drive a substantial amount of search. So it's not just our um, paid search and organic search that drive it, it's actually these video channels as well. So some money's coming out of digital as people are seeing the data hit them between the eyes, some new money's coming in. And then there, there are some segments that uh, are activated just on OTT because that's where they hang out. That's the only thing they watch. And if you want to get to them by video, that's where you have to be. Hey, Rick, I got a question both both for you and Peter. It's like in the next year or two, uh, where do you see the most most growth? Is it from a subscriber model or from an advertising model? Well, I'll, I'll take a quick step at that and then turn over to Peter. I mean, uh, I would say advertising. I mean, we're, we're seeing, you know, a doubling in advertising. I'm not sure anybody's forecasting a doubling in subscriptions. I, I agree with Rick. I mean, we, we saw what, you know, Disney was able to do with because they had this huge, massive library of content. I just don't see, you know, another library like like Disney's library of content coming out that could drive that type of, uh, you know, growth for subscriptions. So I think you're definitely going to see it on uh, on an advertising-based uh, platforms. We've got a few more minutes to answer questions before we go to our closing uh, offers that you want to stick around for and um, more information on all of this going forward for the rest of the year. This last question I actually find interesting as well. Uh, why is Pluto never mentioned in these webinars when 90% of the OTT that is sold ends up on Pluto? Hey, Peter, you mentioned Pluto earlier in, in the uh, presentation, mm -hmm. right? I, I did. I did mention Pluto, and and we get questions a lot about that. I I kind of mentioned the adoption of the fast services last year, uh, Pluto being one of them. I mentioned over 30 million monthly users. Uh, they have a lot of great content as part of you know the Viacom family. Um, I I don't know where you got the stat that 90% of uh, impressions are delivered there. It, it doesn't make up. Uh, I think it's less than 5% of our impressions uh, where we deliver. Uh, but a lot of people have access to it, so I kind of use tongue in cheek, the, the Bill and Ted's X1 OTT company. And it's a lot of the DIYers or the ones that, you know, do a self-serve platform and they're just trying to access inventory. Well, they can get access to Pluto TV or they can get access to a lot of other inventory using open exchanges. Um, I just caution that, you know, this is where you can get exposed to fraud or you might not have, you know, that supply path of inventory that's fraud free. Uh, so that's why you need a trusted partner. In, and sorry, I'm kind of going off on a on tangent here, but that's why it's important to have that trusted partner, make sure you're not getting exposed in those environments. But if you have, if you're seeing 90% on Pluto TV, that would kind of be a red flag to me. Yeah, there's, I mean, we sort of uh, our cover our butt slide. <laughs> it's a good question and fair, but that opening slide, uh, Peter, we're looking at kind of the, the um, ecosystem and all the different brands in there. So there's a lot of brands we haven't mentioned that are extremely significant. Um, Hulu, uh, um, Roku, um, Tubi, Fubo, I mean, there's 300 uh, probably brands um, overall and, you know, a dozen or more are very significant in this space. So, um, you know, good shout out for Pluto. And there's a lot of other very significant players in this space uh, at supported that can do targeting of local audiences. Uh, and that's part of what we're trying to get to look at the overall trends. And there's um, kind of sub stories in each of those. This this chart is is a little bit blurred, but you can see the, the subscriber counts in all of those. And the bubble sizes indicate um, how many subscribers we're talking about. But yep, uh, there's there's a lot of opportunity to activate OTT um, viewers in this space, that's for sure. Excellent. Well, I want to get everybody out of here on time. So let's go ahead, Adam, and move um, down to our local digital resource. For all of you who were so kind enough to show up live and in person today, we've got this handout that I'd like you to grab. We'll also send it uh, again tomorrow to the attendees, uh, but it is our local digital resource. It's got data and insights on all of the verticals that we have presented this year to date in the series. And I strongly encourage you to grab it right now and it gets updated each month as we move forward through the series and the calendar. Next slide. Uh, if you'd like more information on our two companies and you like the research you've heard today, here's a slide to just let you know where you can find out more information about AdMall and SalesFuel and BIA Advantage and BIA Advisory Services. And the links will be in the deck we send to all of you tomorrow. Next slide. 
So May 25th, we would love if you would register and register for the whole series, actually, if you'd like to. But lawyers and accountants, we will meet again next month, and that will be the vertical we'll be exploring then. Rick, you were going to talk a little bit about a, a, a forecast offer. Yes, thanks, Audrey. So the numbers I've been sharing are local spending aggregated up across all markets to a U.S. total. So it's a U.S. total, but it's not the national OTT spend. It's just the aggregation of local spending. We do break this out on an individual market basis. So here, for example, we're looking at Washington, D.C. The OTT spend um, about $21 million, and you can see the breakout of how it compares to other media platforms. So we do that uh, at the market level, and we also do it for 95 different business verticals. So if you do want to get a snapshot of what's going on with OTT, in your market or set of markets, uh, we'll make this offer. Uh, we'll, um, for 195, send you an Excel spreadsheet that gives you the granular details and the forecast for your market. Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Rick. Okay, so if you like the research you've heard from AdMall, we would love, and you're not currently an AdMall customer, we would love for you to become mm -hmm. one. So uh, go ahead to admall.com, check it out. We have a wonderful sales representative, senior sales manager, Denise Gibson, can do a demo for you and uh, get on board. Um, it's a, a great tool to help you succeed. And then also, if you're looking to improve your salespeople in just two minutes a day, of a new product called Coach Feed by Sales Fuel. It's sales micro coaching. It's AI driven and it's delivered through Slack or email. Coachfeed.com has a free trial. I'd love for you to visit there as well. Just a reminder, please fill out our post webinar survey. And if you have questions, you can reach out to me or to Celine Matisse over at BIA. And we wish you a great rest of your day and hope to see you next month. Thanks, everybody. <music>